Hello artists. We're going to be learning today a little bit about Vincent Van Gogh and his painting The Starry Night. You're going to listen to a story about it and we're also going to be working on a project that includes our own little starry night. Katie and the Starry Night by James Mayhew. Katie and Grandma loved to go on trips together. Sometimes, for a treat, Grandma took Katie to the art gallery. One day, they went to see some paintings by Vincent van Gogh. Katie's favorite was called The Starry Night. It looks magical, she said, like a dream. Talking of dreams, said Grandma, I could do with a nap. Katie looked more closely at the picture. The stars seemed to be moving. Grandma was almost asleep, so Katie quietly climbed through the picture frame and into the painting. The dazzling stars sparkled and swirled. They looked close enough to touch. So Katie reached out and grasped one. I must show Grandma, she said, putting the star safely in her pocket. Jumping back into the gallery, Katie saw some other stars twirling after her. Perhaps they want to play, she laughed, jumping up to catch them, but she couldn't quite reach. Hmm, I need something to stand on, said Katie. She saw a picture called Vincent's chair. That's perfect, she smiled. Katie quickly dragged the chair out of the picture as more and more stars tumbled into the gallery. But even standing on the chair, Katie couldn't reach all the stars, and some floated into another picture called Noon. She decided to chase after them, and so climbed through the frame. A young couple were napping in the shade on a hot summer's day. The stars tumbled into the sky, and night soon fell upon the countryside. The woman, whose name was Marie, woke up. Oh, look at all the stars, she said. Surely they don't belong in this painting. Er, uh, no, said Katie. Would you help me catch them? Climbing up the haystack, Katie and Marie had a wonderful time jumping to catch the stars and landing in the soft hay. But when they jumped back into the gallery, the spinning stars slipped through their fingers once again. We must get them back in their painting before the gallery guard sees they're missing, said Marie. But even Marie wasn't tall enough to catch them. Look, there's a ladder, said Katie, spotting a picture called the Olive Grove. She quickly clambered through the frame. Women were gathering olives from a tree. Please, can I borrow your ladder? asked Katie. I have to catch some stars. The ladies laughed. Ma Cherie, you cannot catch stars. You can with a ladder, said Katie. Come and help me. They all raced back into the gallery. The olive pickers held the ladder steady as Katie climbed up to catch the twirling stars. It was tricky work because the stars wouldn't keep still. The more Katie tried to catch them, the more they spun away. The stars were drifting toward another painting called Fishing Boats on the Beach. Come on, we must catch them, said Marie. They all climbed inside. In the picture, the stars were caught on a breeze and twirled out to sea. How will we reach them now, asked Marie. Let's take a boat, said Katie. Oh yes, a boat ride, said the olive pickers giggling. They sailed across the sea as the stars sparkled in the sky. Oh, what shall we do, worried Marie. The stars are so high. Katie saw a big fishing net in the boat. Let's try this, she said. They all threw the net as high as they could and caught the stars. At last, said Katie, as everyone cheered. Back in the gallery, they all quickly ran to the starry night picture. Now we can put the stars back before the guard finds out, said Katie. They threw the stars into the sky, but it didn't look quite right. What's that in your pocket, Katie? asked Marie. My star, said Katie. I wanted to show it to Grandma. But it might float away again, said Marie. Put it in the starry night, and then you can see it whenever you want. So Katie threw the star up into the painting. Thank you, everyone, said Katie. We did it. And now we must return to our pictures, too, said Marie. Au revoir, ma chérie. Goodbye, called Katie. 
Katie put the chair back where it belonged, just in time as the gallery guard came past. Phew, said Katie. Hello. Good afternoon, he said. And then Grandma woke up. Oh, I must have nodded off, she said. I had a lovely dream about stars. Katie giggled. That night, Katie and Grandma looked out of the window. It was a beautiful starry night. The stars look almost alive, said Grandma. Perhaps they are, laughed Katie. Grandma smiled. Perhaps, she said. Good night, Katie. We're learning about Vincent van Gogh and his painting of the Starry Night. So for our project, we're going to be creating our own Starry Night that has a few other things in it. So first thing you're going to need is a pencil. You're also going to need a sheet of paper and then a round circle to shape, uh, a round circle to trace like a bowl or a plate. Um, it could be a paper plate. It's just something that's a little bit larger around this size. It's about the size of my hand. On the paper, we're going to take our pencil and we're going to start down a little lower and we're going to create a line for the ground. It does not have to be straight. You can see I have lots of bumps in mine. Then we're going to take our bowl and we're going to lay it so that it goes over top of where that line is. And then on either side, you're gonna start to trace and you're gonna stop when it gets to the ground. Boop, like that. So that's gonna be our moon. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be drawing a tree. And we're gonna draw a line that comes up and this tree is not gonna have any leaves on it. We're going to make a little V and then come back down a little bit. So that's a branch that comes up and splits off into two. Okay, You can even make the other side of the tree right here if you would like. So we're going to then go up 
a little higher, make a V, and come back down. You can even close off the ends if you want to like that. You're gonna go back up, make a V, come back down. Did you notice that this looks like a letter too? What letter does that remind you of? All right, and then we're gonna go back up, make a V, come back down. Okay, so there's my tree. Somewhere up here in the tree, I'm gonna draw the outline of an owl who's just sit, sitting there. Oops. I'm gonna make his wings going up like that. And maybe I can give him a little branch too. You could even draw a few branches coming off of your tree branches as well. On this side, we're gonna draw just the outline of a house. And we're gonna make this house almost as tall as the moon. Ooh, this house is gonna have a turret. A turret is a tower that comes up, but it doesn't reach down to the ground. And there could be a room inside it. I don't actually need, I don't actually need those lines. I just need the outlines, but you can add windows if you would like to. I'm gonna make it look like there's maybe a little part that comes out on this side. And I'm gonna add some windows, like I said. Oops, that one's a little wobbly. But we don't have to do all the details on the house. We're just gonna have it look like it's right in front of the moon. And then we're gonna add some lines to the sky that remind us of Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. So you're gonna wanna practice your swirly lines, your curving lines that make it look like the wind or just the lines in the sky, almost like it's moving. And then you're gonna to wanna to go back in and add some little circles for stars. And you can add stars, little circles all over your sky. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're going to take, you can take, um, marker or a crayon or a colored pencil, whatever you have, and you're gonna trace the moon. Oops. And this isn't a very big area, it's not too big, so I can use my marker to color it in, or I could use a crayon, whatever I'm comfortable with doing. I think I'm gonna use a crayon And I'm gonna color that in. Oops. Try to fill in your little white spaces as best you can. Our artwork Looks a little bit neater when we do that. And 
You want to go all the way in between the branches. Okay, and I'm going to pause the video here so I can finish coloring, and I'll come back in just a minute. You're also going to want to color in your stars, and then you can use your yellow crayon to color in the windows as well. So it looks like there's a light on, in the, or a few lights on in the house. I think I might add another couple windows over here. And then I'm going to color those in. Now something else you can consider is you can blend another color like orange over a little bit of your moon if you don't want it to be quite so yellow. Or you could take a white and kind of blend it to soften it a little bit. That's up to you. When you're done with that part, I'm going to have you choose a color or a couple colors to trace over the lines in the sky. What I'm thinking of doing is using markers to trace those lines and then use a crayon to color it in. If you would prefer, you could um, trace your lines with a crayon but push a little harder and then push softer when you color the sky so that you can see both your swirls and your background. Just that way it won't all blend in. And as you're tracing your swirls, if you realize you didn't draw enough of them, you can always go back and add some more with your marker or your crayon. Like I could go up here and maybe add a couple more lines. And then I think I'm gonna add some purple to the sky too. I love how Vincent Van Gogh he had all those beautiful lines and it looked like his sky was moving in his painting. He actually made that picture when he was in the hospital and he was looking out his hospital room window and looking at the night sky and that's what he saw. I just, I think that's pretty neat. He made the best of a tough situation and he kept creating his art. So I'm gonna peel this because my, my black was getting a little short there. And I'm just gonna go lightly back and forth for the sky. And you, you don't have to use black. If you wanna choose another darker color for your nighttime sky, you can. You could choose purple or blue or you could even blend purple and blue that would be really pretty too so when I get to my stars I'm being really careful to kind of go around them a little bit and then I'm trying not to color over them because I really want them to show up so I'm going to do that for the whole paper and I'll be back in a minute when that's done Okay, we have the sky all colored in. Now we're gonna work on the ground. I'm gonna find a color that I wanna use for the ground. And I'm gonna color that. And I'm trying to color with my lines all going in one direction. So that my lines and my drawing look neat. You'll notice I have not colored in the tree or the house. We're gonna do that last. We're gonna be making what's called a silhouette. 
So a silhouette is when you can see just the black outline of something because usually it's just too dark to see. It could be at nighttime and it's lit from behind. Like in our case, the tree and the house are lit from behind by our moon. So we're gonna take a black and it's up to you. If you wanna use a black marker, you can. If you wanna use a black crayon, I think I might use the marker for this just cause I have some little tiny things that might be tricky with a mark or with a crayon, I mean. So I'm gonna fill everything in with black. I'm not, not coloring anything with any other colors. This is just gonna be black. So it'll really look like it's a silhouette. And you can do this with a lot of things. You could create any kind of a silhouette in front of a moon. I've seen some kids will draw animals in front of a silhouette. You could even, or as a silhouette, I should say, you could even make a picture with animals somewhere like Africa with a beautiful um, sunset behind your animals and then have just the animals drawn in a silhouette. So you would just draw the outline of the animals and then you would color them in black and have your sunset behind them. That would be really beautiful. And then this side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of trace that outside edge. I don't have to worry about the lines on the inside. I didn't really need to draw them. I might want to trace around the windows before I color, color them in. I've also seen some kids do a house project where they have like a very big house and it's all in silhouette in front of a moon. That might be fun to do, with, especially with it being October. Have our silhouette in front of the moon and our starry starry night. I hope you had fun learning about Vincent van Gogh and his painting the starry night and listening to the story and making your own little version of starry night. I like that ours is it has a little bit of a fall feel to it. Hope you had fun. See you soon.